Good morning, everyone. This is the New York City Board of Standards and Appeals public hearing for April 30th, 2019. We'll begin with the rulemaking items. Item number one, proposed rulemaking under the City Administrative Procedures Act, CAPA, draft rules. Should I call so this is just, as I mentioned yesterday at the review session, this is just the board's adoption of amendments of the board's rules and the adoption of a new rule authorizing FDNY to enforce BSA resolutions. Okay, so then we bring, we can bring this to a vote? Yep. Yes, okay. So I'd like to make a motion to close. Oh, okay. Motion to oh, close? To, just to adopt. To adopt? Yeah. Oh, we oh don't. so we grant it? Okay, yeah. uh, a motion to adopt. to adopt. Okay, Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Okay, is it adopted? Mm -hmm. Okay, item number two, Board of Standards and Appeals, proposed rule draft making, proposed rules making under the City of Administrative Procedure Act draft rules. Okay. Kirk, did you wanna just do a, the same intro as oh, yesterday sorry. because that wasn't a hearing yesterday? Okay, so yesterday, or um, on April 11th, the board held a special hearing on the uh, proposed rule after which the comment period closed. And the board heard, uh, the board heard comments from the public. Um, the overarching comment was just that the rule was not necessary, but as the purpose of the proposed rule notes, the board has seen that many are not familiar with the board's application processes, um, and this was also discussed at the special hearing on April 11th. Um, so the proposed rulemaking is just a way to clear up misconceptions. Um, at the special hearing on April 11th, the board discussed the proposed rule and its um, existing application processes and next steps um, after today's discussion. And we'll be posting the final rule language on our website um, and under the announcement section, and the board will vote at an upcoming hearing. Oh, so today we're you could vote. We today. could vote today if uh, there are no changes. Oh, sorry, it hasn't been posted. That's right. It's oh, it hasn't on the been website. posted. It's not on the website. Oh, that's right. It hasn't been okay. So, so, so. All right. So the proposed rule formally codifies what has been a longstanding unwritten rule governing BSA commissioner conduct. That is, that once an application has been filed at the BSA. Commissioners may not communicate about the application with anyone other than BSA staff without the written permission from BSA Council. The rule also prohibits acceptance by BSA commissioners of any award, plaque, or other thing of value to avoid the appearance of impropriety or undue influence. This portion of the rule is largely already covered by the Conflict of Interest Board laws and rules. Pursuant to City Administrative Procedure Act, CAPA, the BSA held hearing, as was said, on April 11th, at which there was testimony and to which all commissioners present responded. I would like to thank the members of the public who attended the hearing and for their thoughtful testimony. In addition, we recently received written testimony from Community Board 12 in Manhattan. I want to thank them for their careful analysis of the proposed rule and for their questions. Many of the issues Community Board 12 raised were discussed at the April 11th hearing, um, the video recording of which can be viewed on our website. The recommendations made in the oral and written testimony fall outside of the ambit of this proposed rule, but may become the subject of future administrative notices and or rulemaking. So with that, are there, is there any action that we take today? No, not today. Okay. All right then. Okay. Okay. So, uh, special order calendar continued hearing items. Item number three, nine thirty three twenty eight BZ one twenty five twenty four Metropolitan Avenue Queens. Okay. They requested an adjournment. Is there anyone here for this? No. 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 Okay. Oh, they did no. submit. Um, oh, they right. They did submit some materials to because I asked for. Okay just a little bit of um, update on where they are. So they submitted photos and a site plan yesterday to show progress on site improvements. Um, they showed the metal picket fencing around the perimeter, which I thought mm -hmm. looked really good. Mm -hmm. They didn't end up doing a super decorative one because it was very expensive, but I don't think it makes any difference. This looks very good. Yeah. And um, my notes from December said that they would install landscaping along the residential property line 
um, and I, I didn't listen to the video, so others may have different notes on this. Um, we also asked for more dimensions. Uh, this is just to point out the things that we were expecting. Um, we also asked for more dimensions on the site plan between pumps and the street widening line and the location of the dimensions to the location of the structure and uh, outside dimensions of the structure. But um, I want to make sure that the landscaping is um, done if requested. Um, I think we went back and forth in terms of the landscaping as to where it should or should not be or would make sense. And I'm just looking at my note where, um, based on the last submission, we were okay with them remo removing the landscaping, but I, I think Same. it would okay. be best given that amount of review we had. We probably have to listen to the yeah, from my from my notes from the December 11th hearing, Ms. Ayanasto mm -hmm. um, brought up landscaping, and then Vice Chair Shonda said, um, I went back to my notes, and it's true because the landscaping was proposed inside an opaque fence. We didn't think it made sense. So we suggested a more beautiful fence without landscape. Because they were proposing landscaping inside an opaque Behind fence. Behind Right. They said instead of an opaque fence, make it a beautiful, more beautiful fence, fence. And, and, and not have the landscaping. And that's what uh, the direction we had given them. But so it's a, no, but so that's a different thing. So the, so that's where the, now the update is. So the fence that's installed across the street that we were using as a model is a very decorative, basically opaque fence. And uh, yes, and so the whole idea was then you would, there's nothing to shield, right? So uh, this has to do with the residential property line, not the line around the street the line. Thing. Right, so it just has to do with the residential property line because I see w they have a, a dumpster right up against the residence, so um, and then parking right up against the residence. So I think at that point we were saying if you have a really decorative fence around that, then you wouldn't be able to see the dumpster and so on. But if it's picket, open picket, you see it's an opaque fence, the one that's across the street. It's a, it's a very decorative opaque. Um, anyway, so I'm thinking though that the, that that we probably would have wanted landscaping adjacent to the residence, because that's what, well, you're not looking at what the current conditions are. Right, though. no, no, I'm right. just looking at the, right. So, so this may, this, in other words, this may come up again because they asked for an adjournment. So how much time did they, did they say? How much I think they wanted, I believe they, in their letter, they asked for June 11th. June 11th. That's okay. So I just to put them kind of on notice that we may discuss the landscaping. Okay. Uh, June eleventh is fine for a submission of May May twenty second. Okay. Item number four five oh nine thirty seven B Z two oh two oh one Rocky Hill Road, Queens. Raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and respond honestly to board member questions? Elise Volodaire from Eric Palatnik, PC, on behalf of the applicant. Um, firstly, I would like to say that there's no signage proposed on the site, and we took down the, in the notice of comments, we took down the signage because the community board requested that there not be any lights or anything into the residences, so we just took it down completely. So there's no proposed signage. I can ask for a signage sheet that says zero, if that will help. Um. Okay. Well, it could be a, I mean, in our resolution, we can just say no signage is proposed, but any signage provided needs to comply with C1. Okay. okay. Like that. Mm -hmm. No problem. Um, they're going to have an, um, an aluminum okay. fence, and if that's what you want. Last hearing, we were discussing what kind of fence, and similar to the last conversation you had about the last case, you said you wanted something more decorative, so that's why. Right, but so... So the, the, dis, the disconnect is because on the drawings it says the word stockade. Yeah, we'll fix stockade that. Stockade means a particular fence design. Yeah. And on the contractor's description, it's described as picket. We're going to fix it. Yeah, it's so, a mistake. But which one is it? It's the, the pro on the proposal, the 
not the plans, because the proposal was done post plans. So we're going to update the plans. Okay. If that's what you want, we can. We haven't done the work yet, so if that's right. not what no, you want. Right. No, but I'm trying to understand: is it metal picket that's going to be installed, or is it a stockade stock metal design? Pick, metal picket. Metal picket. Because that's okay. what you asked for. But there so was the metal picket is an open yes. type, right? Whereas a stockade is an opaque type. Yes. So in the areas where um, you're adjacent to the resident, yeah, there needs to be then the like, dan dense planting. Yeah. Right. And I. We have planting in front of the... Right, but it's just not at that area that I mentioned yesterday where the, the oil tank storage is, yeah. and it's just a mess back there with the broken <coughs> cement yeah. and uh, sidewalk. They heard all your comments yesterday, and we went sure. through all of them, and they're going, we're, we're going to ask for another hearing so we can revive... The inspect, they can re-inspect the property and do another proposal to see if that's what you're looking for. Oh, uh, okay. I just want to go back to the signage. Uh, yeah. If they do uh, decide to use signage, I'd ask that our resolution say uh, address the concerns of the community board. Which which was about light. What about zero it? illumination on the lot line at, at, at the lot line? The non-illuminated light. So signage with no illumination. Yeah, yeah. so in other words, no. any future. No. The question isn't about illumination because they're entitled to oh. illumination. It's just yeah. that it can't shine yeah. into the residence. Oh, okay. Zero I'm zero just clarifying. Yeah. We'll just okay. clarify that it shouldn't show into, it shouldn't okay. into the residence. Yeah. And um, we went through all the comments. If you want to go through them again, we can, but they're going to okay. look okay. at each of these items and see what they can address and do a new mm -hmm. proposal. But we would respectfully request that because this is so much work, that we get a resolution on condition because it's going to, it's expensive and it's going to take a while to do all of these items. Okay, well, we can talk about If you we agree can talk to all about the items. To what extent that is. Right. Uh, some yes. maybe have to be done now. Some might be done on condition. Okay. Let, let's. Let, we could talk about. Okay. That Just move it along. But um, okay. Okay. Because and then one of the things that I did in. I just want to make sure that we keep in mind the community board recommendations. So um, and the borough president also had recommendations. So when you're working on the plans. Mm -hmm. um, Let's say they approve the application. This is community board for five year term with the following conditions. Provide the manager's contact information, of course. Illuminated signage should be turned off at night, so that's how you're responding. Mm -hmm. um, the building and site should be power washed, so we're talking about painting it. Mm -hmm. um, a tree stump in front of the front office should be removed. I think that might happen as a result of other work being done. Okay. Um, removal of dead vehicle storage, removal of loose tire pile, removal of excess garbage, including weeds, confirmation that the security camera works, um, implementation, of a tag, implementation of a tag system to ensure all cars being worked on are within the legal bounds of the CFO, repair the metal grating on the window. That's something that I think that's at the back, which is one of my comments. No storage of vehicles and all repair work done on, in the work bays, not in the parking lot or city streets. Mm -hmm. And um, the borough president said basically the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, all right. Mr. Euler is here from community. Yeah, are there any uh, uh, speakers, Mr. Euler? She got a the letter is for each one, but there's only one set of pictures. Okay. Okay. Oops. <coughs> no, just that one. Yes, we're we're aware of the right. Good morning. My name is Henry Euler. I'm the first vice president of the Orlandale Improvement Association. The site in this application lies within the boundaries of my civic organization. I'm also the third vice chair of Queens Community Board 11. However, I am only representing my civic organization with this testimony. I listened to the April 29th review session regarding this case, and my civic concurs with all of the requests that this board is making in order to enhance the function and appearance of this particular automotive repair station. The location of this site is rather unique 
Usually automotive repair businesses are located along major thoroughfares surrounded by other businesses. In this case, residential homes and apartments are located directly to the northwest, northeast, and south of the business. Directly to the west is a beautiful pocket park. Therefore, the residents living right near the site must not be subjected to a business that is in need of painting, repairing, and landscaping in order to fit in more appropriately with the standards of the community. There is no reason for this business to be an eyesore when it is possible with some changes to make it more attractive and less unsightly. Another issue that I would like to mention is that there have been two unplated vans parked on the site for most of the winter. I thought that the board had made it clear to the applicant's representative at the December 11th hearing that no dead vehicles should be parked on the lot. Also, work on vehicles should be done in the bays, not out in the open on the front lot as sometimes done. My civic feels that if the board decides to grant this application, all work requested by the board must be completed, including landscaping. No unplated vehicles should be stored on site. No storage of other vehicles on site. Only vehicles awaiting service should be stored on site overnight. No vehicles should be parked on the sidewalk. Work on vehicles should only be done in the bays. Appropriate hours of operation must be spelled out and all other appropriate conditions that the board feels are needed to protect the surrounding residents be listed in the new variance amendment. We feel that the term of the application should be five years as approved unanimously in the conditions voted on by <coughs> Queens Community Board 11. Thank you for allowing me to testify. The two pictures, one picture shows uh, the two dead vans and the other picture shows the wall that Commissioner Sheta had mentioned before at, a previous, at the previous hearing is cracked. And I, we would have thought that that would have been fixed or something would have No, been. The, so what they're doing is they provide us with plans. I see. To see, so we can talk about whether that's the way they should move forward. And they did provide us with, um, they're going to be taking that wall out and replacing it with Good. a fence. Right. Uh, so, where are those vans parked? They're parked um, along 202nd Street. And are they on the, the property line or near they're, the They're on the lot and they're right near the sidewalk. Right near the sidewalk. Right. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, sorry. maybe you could share your proposal with Auburndale. I can, definitely. I have yeah. your email, so I can email it to you. And I also wanted to say that this owner really, because of all the requests, wanted to be really diligent about showing you each and every request in order yeah. to make sure, because it's so expensive, that each of those requests are what you right. want. No. So I just wanted to let him know. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. All right, so timing for getting the revised drawings in? Not a long, as short as you can. We just need to go back, look at the site, and they're ready to go. They were trying to do it yesterday, but then realized it was a little too much to do in one night. Is two weeks enough? Can you submit by May 15th? Two weeks from tomorrow? I'll try, okay, May 15th. I, I'm gonna, that's what they want, so I'm gonna. We could, could give you one more week if you think. Can you give me one more week? Yeah. So. Sorry. Is that okay? May 22nd? May 22nd. 14 and 11 hearing? <clears throat> Thank you. Just want to make sure I can check every. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Don't worry. Right. We want okay. you to check. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Item number 5, 3058 BZ, 184, 17 Horace Harding, Expressway, Queens. Raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. To affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and respond honestly to board member questions. Mm -hmm. okay, so just, yeah. Good morning, Hiram Rothkuth for Vassalotti Associates. So I heard the, the, the board's comments yesterday and we were a bit surprised because we had addressed all of the board's comments, at, at least in our records, in 
in March, uh, March 18th, and uh, additionally in April. So um, I, we saw yesterday the drawings that show the three-foot sidewalk. Um, but uh, my question is, did you ever submit this in hard copy? We, we, we believe our records show that we submitted it physically in hard we, copy and uh, electronically. And then when we spoke, it, so when, we, when we heard your comments yesterday at, at the video at review session, we immediately contacted staff and sent them our submission that we had made. By email, right? We did it, submit, submit it via SA. So, so I was don't that know. by email or by, in hard by submit? That, that was it submitted PSA that we sent it to email, staff yesterday. Email. But originally, we, we su physically submitted and uh, also electronically so, so, submitted. So, this is my problem. We don't have a hard copy. We right? can't find the hard copy from, from with the three foot. We, we don't know we don't, what happened. We don't so know. I don't. I understand. Yeah, yeah. So I I, what I don't know is um, procedurally. If we need a hard copy. Yeah, because is there any way you can deliver a hard copy, either with with us here or to our office today? Uh, I have a hard copy right now. Right, I, I brought it right with me. Okay. Can you share it with us? Can we yes. confirm that it matches what was? Absolutely. What it is and what we need. It's a complete a set of drawings. A complete set of drawings. Okay. I only made one, not okay. knowing what was going to happen today. Okay, I mean, it's really the only thing was the three feet. Yeah, other than that. That's why I didn't see it. I didn't see it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I wait. Are there any speakers on this, Mr. Euler? Okay. Why don't we listen to Mr. Euler while we're checking the joint? Mm -hmm. Chase, could you press another? There are two sets. Mm -hmm. Good morning. My name is Henry Euler. I'm the first <coughs> vice president of the Auburndale Improvement Association. The site in this application lies on the boundary line of my civic organization. We overlap in this area with the Harding Heights Civic Association. I'm also the third vice chair of Queens Community Board 11. I'm representing my civic organization with this testimony. I listened to the April 29th review session for this case. I visited the site on April 29th and saw that the back gate now had a lock on it. And you can see it in the second picture mm. that's been passed around. Um, and of course, at the previous hearing on March 19th, uh, there was a problem with that back gate. It was only secured with a strap but now it's all fixed with a proper lock. Mm -hmm. And the Civic appreciates that this lock was installed. Uh, you know, we don't want to see any trouble uh, on, on that particular site in the rear of the building. Um, we, we still are waiting to see that the dumpster be in, enclosed, as had been requested by the board in order to improve the appearance of the site, which lies within a residential community. Uh, it's important to the Civic that the dumpster be enclosed. Uh, also, the board had expressed concern uh, something with the sidewalk and the position of the new gas dispensers, and we hope those issues get resolved to the satisfaction of the board members. Uh, in summation, all other relevant conditions from past variances should be included in the new variance if the board grants the application. If not already included in previous variances, there should be a condition and any new variants granted stating that there be no parking on the sidewalks, no storage of any vehicles including commercial and unplated vehicles on the site. Hours of operation should also be stated clearly. The Civic recommends approval of the application with all the conditions listed above and also any condition recommended by Queens Community Board 11. <coughs> we would prefer a term of five years, however, if the board decides on a grant of 10 years, it must commence from the date that the previous variance expired in 2017. 
thank you for allowing me to testify. And I have a question for you. The um, first is, do you, when you talk about the hours, does that mean you want to see a sign on the premises that says hours? No, I just want to make sure that the uh, we want to make sure that the hours are established and oh. that they don't go beyond uh, reasonable time limits. Okay. And then um, the other thing you just should know: the reason the dumpster is not installed is because there's a proposal to redo um, the dispenser area, mm -hmm. which includes the sort of little island on which the dispenser is built, and then landscaping. And so all that would be dug up okay. around where the dumpster is, and then the dumpster enclosure constructed. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Chuck. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, did somebody, are, are we good with the set of plans? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so can we consider them submitted? They will be submitted today, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, so we can time. close this then? Yes. All right, so for a motion to close. Are Chair Perlmutter? Sorry, what? Are those the plans? These are the plans no. here. Oh, those were the, um, oh, no. <laughs> we should the keep them. So yeah, yeah, yeah they're the them? submitted plans, yeah. So I, there are only three, page three of four and four of four. What? No, no, no. There are four pages. There are four pages. You don't have one of no, four? No, neither. Four? They don't say one of four. It's three of, there are two sets of three and four. I think they are. Because because you have the, one of them is problem. One, the one or one of two are the, the approved, previously yeah, approved it's plans. Yeah, this, this, is, this is the proposed plans. This is the second copy. So there's two copies of page three and four of the proposed plans. Yeah, okay. that's what it is. Three so and four. Yeah, well, one is, one is a bubble plan and one is the... Yeah, but this is not a complete set. That's what he's saying. C correct, because the pages one and two are the previously approved plans. They would be the stamped. Oh, I see. Okay. This is okay. the proposed plans. Okay. Can you just check that on the, on what you have there? So this is the only number? plan that we would be stamping. Three and four. Correct. Three or four. Three or four and four. And those are the only two that were submitted. Those are the only two that were actually okay. emailed to us. Yes. Right. Okay. okay. All right then. So for a motion to close. Great. Chair Promoter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Okay. Um turn. Yeah, yeah. So um the history of this site has been five year terms. Um well, that, that was the five year term was based just, because of the, just the, the existing automobile repair yeah. operation that right. uh, the community. We so we, did we, we, just, we just closed the hearing. Yeah. So Can this is really discuss? for us to discuss. Okay. So I'm just going to look at the uh, history on the site, right? So the history was it's a 1960 variance um, and it expired. Well, it just expired in 2017, so it's not like they didn't come back. Um, and in terms of issues on the site, um, it, there weren't actually a lot of issues about maintenance on the site. It was mostly the issue of this new dispenser that kept us, held us up, and right? I think some of the issues that have been <coughs> raised by the community and the civic groups were addressed in terms of the conditions of the gates and the walls and other things, apart from the front area, which we know is going to require major amount of removal of the existing uh, right. surface. But, but I think that, that the bulk of what we discussed was how to manage the site in light of the proposed extra dispenser, mm -hmm. and then um, you know, installing these bollards versus a side we're all, all of that kind of stuff. It wasn't about getting the site in order because it was disheveled. Um, and, sorry? But, no, I, I was going to, I don't think, I, I, I agree. I, I don't think there's a, I, I think a happy meeting would be 10 years from the March 12, 2017 date. Yeah. Which is normally right. what we do unless it's already expired, right? Okay. It doesn't seem like the community board's too, uh, or the community's opposed to that either. Right. Okay. So then, so it would be 10 years from the expiration date and, um, and with conditions. The conditions on um, landscaping installed and maintained in accordance with the plans, um, keeping the site graffiti free, paint, um, the painting of the walls and the asphalt maintained and repaired, um, re repaired as necessary and, and maintained, 
no parking on the sidewalk, no overnight storage of vehicles on the site, um, maintenance of fencing and, and the retaining wall. Um, the hours of operation are actually 24 7 for the convenience store, right? Um, I don't know what the hours are for the office. Maybe that's what's Probably. Is it 24 7? Yeah, it's 24 7. I think it is. Yeah. I think it's 24 /7. Yeah, because it has been a 24 by 7 gas station, so I think the proposal is going to change that. Okay, um, and then, uh, well, I don't think that, I think that was a, <coughs> oh, um, of course, the, the, the dumpster enclosure um, installed and maintained as shown on the plan and repaired as necessary, kept in good condition. We often see, unfortunately, these dumpsters, or enclosures not looking very good after a while. Okay. All right, so based on that, um, oh, and to maintain the back gate with the lock on it. Okay, so based on that, a motion to grant. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Utley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. This application's been granted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Aye. Item number six, 33279BZ, 4320 Little Neck Parkway, Queens. Elise Folader on behalf of Rothrook, Rothrook, and Spectre. Um, they would like a eight, week, eight weeks to submit. Eight weeks. Okay. All right. But they're flexible. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, eight weeks. Okay. So that'd be submission date on July third, uh, for July twenty third. July twenty. Okay, thank you. Item number seven, 149-97BZ, 150-19, 11th Avenue, Queens. <coughs> Excuse me. Raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and to respond honestly to board member <coughs> question? I do. Okay, please sign in and proceed. <coughs> Here. Here you go. <coughs> Is this document? Yes, if you could. Angelino, you can start. Good, good morning, commissioners. Frank Angelino on behalf of the application. With me uh, to my left is Stephen Katz, who is the architect for the project. Um, in, um, in response to the question about where the um, zoning computations came from, we have the 1968 uh, variance drawings and they were taken from the 1968 variance drawings, um, the zoning computation sheet, and they are consistent with what's on the 1968 drawing, and we could submit that to the yes, board. Yes, because we haven't seen it, so, right? You've never submitted that before, right? No, because uh, one of the things in this case, the 1998 uh, variance had no reference and no plans from the 1968 variants. So we were just basing what was submitted in 1998 on, in that case, the 20 year variance for the accessory parking. So, uh, but we did have a copy of the 1968 uh, zoning computations in our files. So we were able to do the drawing that was submitted to you, I believe it's BSA 2, which was submitted in our last submission, which the architect based on the 1968 computation for how the uh, parking was established for the funeral home site, the adjacent site. So you didn't find in um, BSA archives 
the draw the night the drawings for 138-68BZ in the BSA archives. We didn't. I didn't look in the 1968 <laughs> archive. We had that plan. The architect had that plan uh, in his files. <coughs> sorry, are these the drawings that the? I'm sorry. Tell me again your name. Stephen Stephen Katz. Katz, Mr. Katz. D. Are, is what you're holding in your hand a BSA approved drawing from 1968? No, we don't have the BSA approved drawings. We have what we believe were the BSA approved drawings, but without the approval stamp. Without the stamp, yes. okay. Yeah. So, but where you just happen to have those in your files? Is no, that we got, we got, we, we've been working on uh, with this client for a number of years. We have these in our files. That you obtained from the BSA? Yes. It's a stamp from the BSA? There's, there's, these are not stamped. I don't They're know why. Stamp received date. I'm, I'm sorry. Just uh, It wasn't uncommon in those years that the stamp was on the back of a plan. No. Yes, yeah. but they didn't yeah. double side so it. Yes. So maybe to clar for clarity, we should request the archives cases. I was going to request from yeah. archives the file today. Okay, So that we can make that. sure, double check, and make sure that we have the drawings. I can't. Imagine that they differ substantially from what was submitted, right. but we'll find out. It's a fact. Okay. okay, let's do that to just make it super clear. Appreciated that you came with what you had. But, um, yeah. Okay. And anyway, it's not a fish, it's not submitted, and we don't have the time to review it like this. So okay. All right. So um, how much time do we normally need with archives? They can um, do a rush. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the turnaround could be three, three, four days. Okay, so we could, uh, are there any speakers on this? We could put this on for like even next week, potentially. Is that too soon? I think that's too soon. soon. Yeah, okay. Maybe two weeks. Okay, because we're just checking a number. Right. Just um, yeah. <coughs> oh, you want to eat? What is this one? That's Target. Oh, that's okay. It's only checking the number. Okay. So that would put it on for May. That doesn't work either. Twenty. Right? No, it does. Yeah, if you want to give a different, a different yeah. submission. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so we can put you on for continued on May twenty first. Um, how does the board feel about May eighth instead of May first for a submission date? Yeah. Th yeah. Then that would okay. be enough time, right? Yeah. Submission date May eighth. May eighth. Yeah. And if you could make sure that you send a copy to Daryl Ruffin so he's aware mm -hmm. that it's coming and then we can be alerted earlier to take a look at it, right? Okay. And you, you can include my son. Yeah, that's true. Include Carlo because that's the <coughs> Carlo Costanza because that way we can check quickly whether the number is right and then it doesn't, it just makes it easier for us. It's a very busy calendar day. so. Yeah, knowing in advance would be helpful. Okay, okay? thank you. Um, I don't think we had any other issues, right? It was just the parking question. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Item number eight, eighty-five ninety-nine BZ, eleven zero six Metcalf Avenue, the Bronx. This is being was discussed. there any request for a, for the date of adjournment, or was it at our discretion? Mm, not that I'm aware of. Okay, so on to July. Um, okay, how about a submission date of uh, July 3rd for hearing July 23rd? Okay. Item number 92230BZ272 West 10th Street, Manhattan. Raise your right hand. You affirm yourself the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You have testimony before this board and respond to the board member question. Good morning. Amanda Iannotti on behalf of the applicant. Um, we heard the board's comments yesterday. Uh, there was one question. Uh, whether we had all sign-offs from DEP. Um, we do. They're attached to the back of the tech memo. The last one we were waiting for was HAZMAT, which was uh, sent on March 1st. Sent the Mar March 1st HAZMAT sign-off. Sign-off letter. Right. Okay. Right. So, and we received, after a lot of back and forth with LPC, we received essentially a comment from general counsel's office 
that the um, that the email that was sent by uh, one of their staff members should be adequate to um, essentially uh, adequate for them, which is effectively them having no objection to our deciding on this case. Mm -hmm. okay. So finally, okay. So um, then I'd like to ask if there are any speakers, and everything is now cleared up, Great. right? So I'd like to make a motion to close. Chair Promutter, aye. Vice Chair Chanda, aye. Commissioner Ockley Brown, aye. Commissioner Shetta, aye. Commissioner Shabetta, aye. And I don't see any conditions of any kind, so, right? No condition. DOT what? Oh, right. Yep. That should be in the resolution. That should just be in the resolution, which I'm not. But no further board. No board, board conditions. conditions, just close. DOT, right? Oh, you close. And DE. And, and LPC. So um, LPC doesn't have conditions. It's. Okay, so wait a minute. Yes. Okay. Our council should note that there were conditions of approval in DOT and DEP, no LPC conditions. LPC is just complying with the Landmarks Commission's okay. C of A. On another application, they had a restrictive deck, but that's not the case here. Okay. Um, okay, so um, then I'd like to make a motion to grant with DOT and DEP conditions included in the resolution. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Thank you. Item number 10, 208 03 BZ 2555 Shell Road, Brooklyn. Anyone going to stand for this? Um, what's her name? Elise. 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 Maybe not. Elise should be there. What's Elise? Okay. Just call, call the item again. Item number 10, 20803BZ, 2555 Shell Road, Brooklyn. Raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and to respond honestly to board member questions? So we got a few adjournments here. Lise Folader from Aaron Palatnik, PC. Okay, so we did receive finally the parking lease with the right parties and signatures and so on. So I don't think there are any other issues. Are there any speakers on this? I'd like to make a motion to close then. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Arthur Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetha? Aye. Commissioner Shibetta? Aye. And a motion to grant on condition. The conditions of the original variance continuing forward is the standard, but just to underscore that. And that parking is to be provided at the adjacent lot for the length of the catering use. Chair Promoter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Thank you very much. I'll go get the next applet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Sitting up. Tony, do you want to call? Oh, sorry. Item number 11, 17706BZ, 1840, Richmond Terrace, Staten Island. Steve. Raise your right hand. Oh, sorry. That's okay. There? You can do Stand it there and you come back. Right here, sorry. Raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board to respond to the board member questions? I do. Okay. Uh, good morning, Stephen Simicic for the applicant. I uh, attended the review session yesterday and heard the fact that, as anticipated, the lack of the driveway being fully paved photos is the thing that's holding us back here still. And because of weather and rain and everything the last couple weeks, it hasn't been completed yet, but now they're anticipating by the end of May, you know, to have it done as soon as the weather pocket opens up one of these mm -hmm. weeks. So that's the last remaining okay. element here that needs to be completed. Okay. So, um, yeah, I would like to just finish this site off properly. So why, end of May, you said? So what if we gave, come back in mid, end June? Yeah, yeah. I was even anticipating early June, June 3rd hearing is fine. I might be able to I mean, essentially, at this point, the weather should allow the paving to take place. 
one and of this these. This is the final thing. Pictures. It's just this photo. It's just a photo of the of the paint. Yeah. Powerful, yes. It's okay with me unless it's not. Okay that's that's fine. It's fine with the rest of the board. On okay. June, June fourth. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then I guess that the the, the the normal due date is May fifteenth, but I, I suppose there's no objection to May thirty first. That's fine. Division yeah, yeah. by May thirty first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we want to close? Yes, I was asking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Are there any speakers on this? So I'd like to make a motion to close. Chair Promoter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shibba? Aye. Thank you. Great. Thank you. New cases, item number 12, 19702BZ. 2825 Nostrand Avenue, Brooklyn. Steve has got a sign. Do you affirm, raise your right hand, do you affirm to tell the whole truth, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board, and to respond honestly to board member questions? Sorry, Steve. Elise Volodaire from Eric Palatnik, PC. Um, going to go through each of the items. Um, firstly, um, a letter of objection from the FDNY. Uh, I had the architect respond to that, but we I have discussed it with the fire department and I realize they're going to have to do an inspection anyway, but they provided a response as to why they don't need a standpipe. But why they don't need a what? Potentially don't need a standpipe. Oh but they will work it out with the fire department and um, inspection if he wants to. Good morning, John Daly. Uh, I did uh, speak with Elise earlier and, uh, and regarding the architect's response, regardless of his response, the system was removed illegally. They had filed a an application in 1998 to legalize the removal, but the application was disapproved. I have currently uh, informed our fire suppression unit who are responsible for inspection of sprinkler and standpipe uh, systems to uh, give me a direction as to what we should do as the fire department to either okay the removal or have a sprinkler system installed. Mm -hmm. I have also informed our, our PA unit that these premises do not have an operating permit from the uh, building department and I also have the our illegal conversion task force visiting the site because of the the layout instead of repurposing the theater to a PCE mm -hmm. they're using the exterior fire escape the fire stairs or whatever it's called, yeah. called that I don't know if they're being maintained so uh, personally I my, myself and the other units will be visiting the site so we do respect we request a continued hearing on this application. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so in terms of fire safety measures, we already went through it a little bit. They also mm -hmm. have three means of egress, but I guess we will address that with the fire department. Mm -hmm. um, so for ADA access, um, there's an interior ADA ramp. The first floor has ADA compliant bathrooms. So, so. So ADA access, the the facility takes place on three floors, yes. right? And there's lots of different things on each floor. So mm -hmm. ADA access says that you don't have an elevator mm -hmm. if you're providing all the same services on one floor mm -hmm. that's accessible. Yeah. You, that we need more on that because I don't understand how three floors of different kinds of activities makes all the activities accessible, right? Okay. And when we think disability, there's so many different kinds of disabilities, right? Okay. So it doesn't mean that the person can't participate in those things, mm -hmm. right? Okay, we will provide a written response to that question. Okay. Um, in terms of change of ownership, the ownership what hasn't changed, but the operator, as you noticed, has changed. And they were it was filed on behalf of the Nostrand Kings, which was the owner. So, so it used to be 
called Forum Fitness. You're saying the ownership Owner, of yeah. Forum Fitness is the same so the building as Harbor? Yeah, the building owner. Oh, but that's and not we filed the operator. It's the operator, yeah. operator of but the gym. We, that has to be reviewed by DOI. Right. But we have gotten the PCE forms yesterday, so we are ready to submit those. And we already filed for an amendment, so we can add this to the application. As okay. Do you have the authorization amendment. from the PCE to represent you? No. no. There's only authorization from the owner of the building. We don't have the PCE. I can get an affidavit from yeah. the PCE operator. So that that's a... So you're representing the owner in this case. Yeah, because right? the prior applications were all filed. They all said no Stern Kings. They were all the owners. Oh. If you but look at the... May, they all said no Stern King because the owner didn't probably have a PC. We've seen this before where yeah. there was no gym yet contracted to occupy the space, and the owner knew that they were going to eventually rent it to a gym. Well, when it was for him, it was filed on behalf of no Stern. In the right, last, but that was what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So, so, and we've had these where the owner of the building knows that they want a gym, okay. and they're negotiating at the moment with a potential tenant. So they file for a PCE, and eventually the tenant moves in. But then after that point, mm -hmm. it's the it's the DOI search is the integrity of the PCE, not of the property owner of the building. Go ahead. Yeah, and I, just I think just to clarify. So mm -hmm. as to the applicant. It's mm -hmm. the property owner which is permitted. Right. As far as the statutory requirement of the DOI, the affidavit or the operating entity has to go through the DOI process. And we have, we're getting those fine. papers ready, and we already filed an amendment, so we'll just add it to the yeah. Right. But I don't. No, no, and no. I'm not sure. I'm just not sure if we need an affidavit of ownership to authorize the PC. Well, this I think is the part I don't get. Yeah. DOI is going to be investigating the PCE owner, and the yeah. PCE owner doesn't apparently know about it, Got it. right? So, yeah. I mean, that, that's yeah. what this is about. The, that owner becomes exposed to investigation, right? Understood. So, we got told it. Him. so yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, that's why I asked thank for you. It. Right? Sorry, but that's why I asked for it. Mm -hmm. No, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure procedurally we weren't asking for more. Okay. Okay. Um, there are three parking spaces per the final C of O. Um, and they are accessed from East 31st Street, and they're for staff. Okay. And then the trash area is in the uh, existing inner court with access from Nostrand Avenue, and it is, they say it's screened from the street, but I guess we'll ask them about what that bin was. So based on the photos, yeah. I saw a trash bin um, located on 31st. Um, they said it's supposed to be in the inner court, so. I, we weren't exactly sure. And this is from the Google. Google, yeah. Google Street we View, looking. if you look at the 31st Street, um, there is a trash uh, container, um, and that is outside the fenced area. So I wasn't sure if that belonged to the PC or to the other users. Do you have it up? Could you show me? Let it? me just, uh, what is the address of this? Um, it is no hmm? 2825 Nostrum. Slow. Okay, so it's she he has it. It's this Council one. Has yeah. It. yeah. Oh, yep. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one. Okay. I will show the method if there's I will have the put it in the proper place. Yeah. That's it, right? Those yep. are the issues, the, bra the banners that need oh, to be included? They were removed and uh, oh. in an April 10th submission. I don't know if you saw the April 10th submission. Mm -hmm. Is that? 
but very nicely I was scheduled for this hearing with as long as there was not as so this was submitted April 10th and you can see I just tried the banners for Okay. okay. Now, the photos that were provided, there is also a vertical banner. Um, that's not in this, and in the. So this is the photo photos that were submitted. So the um, the uh, signage uh, on the lower part, the awning signage has been calculated, but the vertical sign that's there on top of the awning. Um, is not included in the plan. I will ask about the third. It's like the classic the theater sign, like mm -hmm. the theater marquee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. okay. Are there any speakers on this one? No? Okay. I think that covers it, right? Okay. I think so. <laughs> All right. Any other open issues anybody wanted to add? No. Okay. So we can just. Uh, well, we need fire department to, how much time do we think it's going to take the fire department? One month? Okay, so at least, yeah, let's say six weeks to make it safe. Or, or longer if it's over. Uh, we have a replicator uh, submission for June 5th for hearing June 25th or submission June 26th for July 16th. Any fancy? Which one do you want? June 25th or July 16th. Uh, June 25th. Okay. June 25th it is. So submission date June 5th. Fire department whenever you're ready for uh, continued hearing June 25th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 134912BZ. 3409 Francis Lewis Boulevard, Queens. This application is being postponed due to lack of proper notification. All right, so we need to allow time for notice. Uh, just um, no, note to staff if, uh, if uh, we can re notice this one uh, for the applicant. Why don't we put it on for June 25th? Mm -hmm. Re notice. Yeah. Okay. Do you want, what's a new date? June 25th. June 25th? Postponed. Okay. Appeals calendar, continued hearing items, item number 14, 20515A through 21415A, 128.60 to 128.76 Hook Creek Boulevard, and 128.63 to 128.75 Fortune Way, Queens. Um, I'm going to swear you in. Yeah, Raise your right hand. Do you, I know it's asked me to adjourn, but do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board? Wait, it's not that. It's not, uh, before this board. Actually, I'm sorry, it's an in case. You don't have to be this sworn in. This is an in case. But yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. You don't have to be sworn in. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Getting but carried it's an away. it's for GCL. Why isn't that? All right, anyway, never mind. We'll talk the about that later. later. Has, okay. okay. Elise Voltaire from Eric. Sorry, uh, I mean, I'm from sorry. On behalf of Roth Krug, Roth Krug Inspector, the only thing I wanted to say that is that they received the FDNY submission on 219 2019, and that's what they've been working through. It wasn't three adjournments in a row. It's that they have to now, and they're going to put sprinklers in all the five homes, but that's what they're working through right now. And that's well, what but what they're so that's February, and that's and <coughs> that's notes on a drawing to. Put yeah, the sprinklers just, on. I'm not sure what other. But also, they're doing the H. I forwarded you an email yesterday. Oh, and the HOA. The HOA. It's not like it has to go to the AG's office, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm having a lot of trouble understanding why you need so much time to put the words to be sprinklered, all houses to be sprinklered, and the HOA has been a subject of conversation since um, October of. Well, maybe not October of 17, but pretty close to there. They weren't, Roth Krug's office was not retained to do it, and now But is are. that the fault of um, the Board of Standards and Appeals? No, it's the fault of the applicant for deciding not to hire a counsel who knows how to do this work, right? So I'm just talking about why is it here for a year and a half in hearings? Mm -hmm. But they did over and well, over they and over again. waiting for fire department 
while. But but okay, but fire department in February gave them put sprinklers in. That's it, right? Everything else, the HOA was requested a year ago, all right? So what I want to say is um, it seems like there's nothing to be done on the drawings other than to write the word sprinklers unless fire department wants to add something else that they asked for, no. <laughs> so, um, and the HOA, it's not rocket science. They have to have an HOA. They've written dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of HOAs, and they know what to say, they're about maintenance, they're about no parking, they're about the same thing every okay. single time, right? So, new date? So, so a new date. Um, so we can give them three months, three and months. that's it, and also a dismissal and they said warning. they can submit in four weeks. Well, I'm not, it, yeah. but. I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, they're, they're like, uh, what do we do? We shouldn't be, um, be given this warning. Well, yes, they should. <laughs> okay. Okay, so. A dismissal warning letter, three months. Last, that's the last adjournment. Last okay. and only. Right? Okay, so it's a little less than three. Oh no, that's only okay. More than three months. Because the one before that, you only have three commissioners. We'll oh, that okay. So, um, okay, so submission August twenty-first for continued hearing September tenth. September tenth. Okay. okay. Item number fifteen. 2017-16A through 2019-18A Clintonville Street and Clintonville Court and item number 16-2018-105A Clintonville Court. They've asked for an adjournment. What did I click on? Okay. He requested a June 11th. Are you okay with that? There are 23 on the calendar. No, no, no I'm just saying that. Oh, no, 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 Stated. Yeah, but I, I yeah, don't know. It's out of time. Um, this is Clintonville. What's the submission date on? It's May 22nd. That means they're ready right away and I don't have faith. <laughs> All right, so let's do it either end of June or early July. We can do July. Oh, yeah, we can do June 26th submission for July 16th hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. July 16th hearing. Mm -hmm. June 26th submission date? Six submission date, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Because they are still awaiting for recon from DOB mm -hmm. to the open space, so we don't know the status of that. I'm working at the ETH. Okay. All right, next. Keep going. There yes. They perceive yes. their risk. Zoning calendar, continued hearing items, item number 17, 2017, 217 BZ, 4855 Highland Boulevard, Staten Island. They're also requesting an adjournment, ongoing discussions with DOV. Um, last we heard this was February, they adjourned in March, so we should give them all much more time than okay. it was a mistake to put it just a month. Or July yeah, date? so July date. Mm -hmm. We can do July 16th or 23rd. Oh, okay. This is 23rd. Okay. So July 23rd, hearing, July 3rd, submission. Right, spread the wealth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Item number 18, 2017, 233 BZ. 446-448 Park Avenue, Brooklyn. Good morning. Um, we need a bit of time. Speak your name. Amanda you. Iannotti. Thank uh, you. For the applicant. We need a bit of time for this. Um, could we have late July? Mm -hmm. um, July 23rd, is that okay? Sure. That's to, for the hearing or for submit? For the, for the hearing, late July or early August. First of all, let's make it. I can give you early August. Well, wait, wait, wait. This one is. Um, yes. It's a variance. It's a variance, and we don't have all of our commissioners. The 13th, I think we don't have both. On the 6th, we do not have Commissioner Shida. On the 13th, we're missing Commissioner Shida and Shibata. No, we can't do it those, those days. But we weren't going to. We're going to do July 23rd. I'm, I'm going to be here on, here. 20, on the 23rd. I'm going to be here. July 23rd. Yeah, everyone's here on the 23rd. Oh, oh, oh okay. No, it's, I'm sorry. Is it enough time? Because the submission is July, July 3rd. 3rd. 
Um, that's two months. I'll have a, a little longer if possible. They need that's to nice. redo that's cost nice. estimates and but well, Sorry? they need to redo cost estimates, which um, they've taken a bit of time on those. I'm gonna do September. Yeah. Do September yeah. 10th for August 21st admission. There's nothing late August. The thing we're just missing in the hearings. We don't, we we need. We'd rather not put variances on hearings where we're missing commissioners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'll take so it. Um, August twenty first submission for September tenth hearing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nineteen twenty seventeen two seventy three BZ nine seventy five East twenty fourth Street Brooklyn. No, we're no, we're not this. sworn in. So, state your name. Lyra Altman from the Office of Lyra Altman. Okay, so for adjournment, um, well, uh, how much time do you need? We've spoken with the architect. If we could have a June 4th date, we'd appreciate that. June 4th here. That, that is correct. Yeah. I know it's going to be a long day. Oh, no. No, yeah. No. We, yeah, we have a no. Okay. This is all the vote we need. Uh, we can do June 11th. That I cannot do because cannot. it's a holiday the day before, no. so none of my architects are available. We could do June 25th. We can do June 25th. Okay. So that's submission date of June 5th. Thank you. Thank you. One sec. Oh, not right here. Sorry. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and respond honestly to board member question? Okay. Can you call the calendar? Oh, I'm sorry. 2 8 2017 295 BC, 128 West 26th Street, Manhattan. I'm sorry. Uh, good morning. Jay Goldstein for the applicant. I believe we addressed the board's concerns. Yes, and I want to thank you, as was stated by some other commissioners, for being so responsive to our comments. It speeds up the hearing process when people are actually hearing and specifically responding to the comments as opposed to not responding to the comments. Um, so I would like, are there any speakers on this? I'd like to make a motion to close. Chair Permutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta. Aye. And a motion to grant. No conditions, right? Mm -hmm. Chair Promutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Thank you very much. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Item number 17, 2017, 315 BZ, 2030 East Chester Road, the Bronx. Raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board? <coughs> and to respond honestly to board member questions. Okay. Elise Bolladere from Eric Bolanek, PC. I don't believe there's any comments. No. So council's okay with the changes yes. that were made? Okay. Thank there you very much. Because notice those yeah. modifications. Chase, okay. thank you. So are there any speakers on this? So I'd like to make a motion to close. Oops. Oops. One second. Sorry, I gotta turn the page. <laughs> Chair Promoter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. And a motion to grant. Chair Promoter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta. Sorry, Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Thank you very much. This application's okay. been granted. Item number 22, 2018-16-BZ, 974 Sackett Avenue, the Bronx. Elise Volodair on behalf of Rothkrug, Rothkrug Inspector. The request is uh, four weeks, if you have anything. Four weeks to submit? Submit, submit yes. yeah. <coughs> okay. And they've been notified about continuous use. They're working on it. Okay, that would be the students we have is um, July 16th hearing for June 26th submission. June 26th, yes, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, hearing has been, I'm sorry. July 16th. Okay. Item number 23, 
2018-21 BZ, 1773 East 22nd Street, Brooklyn. Raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and respond on any board member questions? Good afternoon, or good morning, Mayor Altman for the loss of Lyra. So the corrections were made, but apparently we're missing a yeah, soundboard. Yeah, so you have, you're have extending and you're doing a side an extension in this, one of the non-compliant side yards, and we don't have an historical map establishing that that side yard is lawful, not complying. Ah, okay. Let me see what I can do. If we could second call, I'll see if I yeah, can get one quickly. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be Thank great. You. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So a second call in this? Yes. Make a note. Okay. Item number 24, 2018-48 BZ, 5205 Highland Boulevard, Staten Island. Raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board to respond on city board member questions? Morning, Chair and Commissioners. I um, watched the videotape last night, and I apologize for the bad quality of the scans for the photographs and for the drawings. We will correct that. I will also submit a um, revised application for an extension of time to obtain the certificate of occupancy. Um, as per the last hearing, I just wanted to clarify: it wasn't to resurface redo the asphalt in the uh, parking lot the board requested that I eliminate a curb cut that was closest to Arbutus yeah. so we pulled DOT permits okay. we eliminated that curb cut we replaced the entire Highland Boulevard frontage yeah. with new curbing and because we did a six inch face on the uh, curb we replaced a portion of the sidewalk along the entire Highland Boulevard I and appreciate that you did it with permits and put in the steel steel face curve. Facing. That was impressive. That was a fight. They wanted us to, because we're in a residential zoning district, they said just do concrete DOT. And uh -huh. I had to go down there and explain to them, look, it's a variance and this should be steel face. Wow. We really appreciate it. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the trash area, um, what you're seeing in that very bad photograph is the old sign that was folded in half and oh. put into the trash area. So it's not three fences. It's our fence on one side, and then the blue belt put up their other fence, the, the black fence on their side. So there are two fences, but it, was, it wasn't done like you do what you want, we do what we want. Our fence was always there, and then blue belt came along and put up their fence. Blue belt being the, the city. Blue belt? The city, oh, OK. Um, okay, so I, I, for me, the, my concern is what does it look like when you're standing in the park looking to this use, right? So, um, I don't even know if I can get in there. But, so, but you can tell from, your, from the materials whether it looks trashy when you look through the chain link fence okay. or whether it looks attractive, right? So, um, since we weren't provided with any photos of the inside of this thing, I mean, you could probably even reach your hand through the chain link and take a picture of it. Well, I can, I can open up those two gates. Yeah, no, but I'm looking at the other side of it too, right? Because normally we can see both sides because there's like, and normally there's say residential property next door and you can take a picture of the fence at an oblique angle from the, pro from the residential side. I can do that. We're not, we're not going to see much given that everything's popped in terms mm -hmm. of um, um, leaves and mm -hmm. it's really dense there, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. Okay, okay. Uh, so, but the issue is, you know, what the issue is: respect for the fact that you're adjacent to this. Well, if my park. photograph from the inside shows the underbrush on the opposite side, I think that'll answer the question. Yeah. Okay. If not, I'll put on my boots and go around the other side and take a photograph. Oh, go with boots. You're supposed to go to sites with boots, right? <laughs> okay, um, and then um, about the tires being stored, um, that's actually not something that's permitted, and we, that's 
Yeah. I will take it off the plan. We had discussed it at the last hearing, but I'll, I'll take it off. Okay. Right. Was there anything else? Uh, no, so that's the same subject. The enclosure is what we're talking about. So they did provide really hard to read photos of the enclosure and but didn't go inside the enclosure to show us what's going on there right they, cha they changed the slot the slats on the uh the two fence gates and on the piece of fence on the right hand side right okay so in, and because my notes say um something about asphalt oh asphalt was supposed to be reserved yeah, but, and you're saying, so I think, you know, the way, I don't know if, Ted, is this the site? Okay. So, um, I don't know if anybody else has notes about it. I was basing it on the photographs that you were providing last time about the condition, apparently, that it looked like the surfaces didn't look even. They looked cracked. No, the, the asphalt's in pretty good shape. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, all of our conversations um, centered around that curb cut. Mm-hmm. I, I, get, I described it as the cracked drive areas. Maybe that's what this was about, about the actual drive. Um, well, we replaced, the, we replaced the ribbons, the curb cut ribbons going up, so mm -hmm. that should have solved the right, problem. Right, so maybe that's what it was. So basically the driveway going on the sidewalk. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, okay, so this seems like you could do this quickly now. I can. I just have to, you know, herd the client and the operator to clean up what they have. So I would need a, a, a couple of weeks to do that. What do you mean by clean up what they have? Go into the um, oh, into the trash the area, get rid of the sign, take it to the recycling center, wherever they want to take it. Make, make sure that it's weed whacked and it's raked out and that it looks presentable. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have to understand though, and you're going to explain it to them, that this isn't just something for the photo and then they go back to their old ways, right? True. Right. And there are some, a couple of extra signs that should be taken down. Right. So when they, took, when they took down the big sign, it revealed that the covering for the rolled up gate had painting on it that advertised what they're doing. It's in one of the bad photographs. So I instructed them that that painting, the painted letters have to be covered up. <coughs> you really can't see, you can barely see it on photo four, but I'll, I'll take care of it. I know it has to be done. speakers on this all right could you submit in a month I can well how about us continue hearing June 11th submission May 22nd June May 22nd June 11th yes done thank you Great. very much thank you right. item number 25 2018 194 BC 2317 Avenue K also known as 1086 East 24th Street Brooklyn Raise your right hand. You affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and to respond on single board member questions. Good morning. Lyra Alvin from the Lost Lyra Alvin. We had somebody attend your executive session yesterday and heard your comments regarding the height. Now, interestingly enough, there was a comment that the building that is three houses to the left was 35 feet in height. That's actually not accurate. There were two different things that you might have looked at to see that. Number one, you could have been looking at the streetscape, but the streetscape is showing the building that's currently existing on the site. The new building, of course, has not been built yet, as it was only approved by the BSA a couple of months ago. We've already submitted to your board a copy of the prior BSA resolution approved plans. You should have those in your record. It was item 30 with the approved plans. 
you will see that that building was approved with a flat roof of 35 feet and a portion that went up to 38 feet, three inches. You need to look at the elevation. Mm -hmm. the, you know, In addition, based elevation. You don't happen to have that there I with do. you. Okay. Of course I have that. Let me pull that out for you. Because it has to be the same height above the base plane. Right? Look at this what's in elevations. To that little thing. Well, right. If you look at it, it actually goes <coughs> across okay. the building. So then, but they don't have elevations? You know, what about datum? Nobody's approved. 2018, they're not shown in NABD 88. No, that was newer than this. This was approved in October or November. What? This is the piece that's at 38.3. Sorry. 2018? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, was, it was either October or November. I'm not <laughs> it sure. Was, it's, it's stamped as November 20th. Yeah, they received November 20th. Right. But they're not shown in NAPD. That's really. That was something the board did start requesting after. No, no, no. It's been required since 2013. There are occasions when plans are submitted and approved without NAPD. Yeah, yeah. Well, they shouldn't be. Um, okay, so there's, we don't have any way of. Of determining what the actual height is above. Chuck, I can give you some other height from the block as well in terms of your information. When was the when was it approved? It's in the record. No, well it says November twenty eighth. Let me look at the resolution. Which November is also second. The resolution is also yeah. in your record. I can give you a date. November twentieth of eighteen. That's the resolution date. And that's item I think the resolution is item twenty nine on the submitted documents to your board. Here. There's no base plane elevation. Okay. In addition, whenever you're ready with this, I'll show you some other heights on the block as well. No, I was mostly concerned about the K elevation because that's where the that's the symmetrical block. Right. Well, I have some others right on K also. No, but that's down the street. I'm like right across the right here, right here. This is our site. Right yeah. Now. This is the site that we're talking about. Right. This is another house that is 42.07 according to the tax map. Right. Mm -hmm. And right here, right the tax map is 39.09. Point out for both of those buildings. I did check the Department of Buildings website for any illegal construction that's on the location anymore. Right. Any right. more PSA approval. This is the PSA approval right here. That's a 36.72. And there's another house here, also no violations mm -hmm. or indication of the fork at 37.12. Mm -hmm. um, just to give you some other heights in the data. Okay. What do you I, I, I'm just going back to the notes that I have from mm -hmm. the submission of October 31st, mm -hmm. where based on the revised plan, my notes mm -hmm. indicate that the maximum building height increased to 38 feet and a slight increase in perimeter wall height. That's all I oh, have. on that particular for application that, for that in November. Particular application. Okay. All right. So That's 38 is what it's showing on the document. Yeah, 38 to be exact. Okay. Um, thank you. So, are there any speakers on this? All right. Um, uh, okay. So then I'd like to make a motion to close. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Utley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. And then I'd like to make a motion to grant on condition that the DOB verify height, that the height and setback complies with the zoning resolution. Um, to clarify that the BSA is waiving only floor area and open space ratio and not height or permitted obstruction requirements. Um, and that the removal, as we always talk about, removal of existing walls and joists in excess of that shown on the plan is will avoid the special permit. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. <coughs> Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Application is granted. Thank you very much. Thank you. You want to take this? Okay. The morning calendar is concluded. We will resume at 1 o'clock. Wow. Lunch received for oh, the afternoon calendar. Can.
Can we, can we, yeah, can we have a second call if she has her? Oh, you have it? Really? A 1929 yes. Belcher hide map. Really? That's why I was oh, watching okay, my I'm phone. Sorry. I wasn't meant to be disrespectful as you were voting. I was doing one of these going, please sure. tell me it's coming. Let's do a second call. Okay, sorry. Have it. That's uh, Avenue K, right? Number 23. 20. Number 20, oh, 1773. 20. Sorry, I'm sorry, 17, uh, 23. Item number 23, we are call, recalling for second call, 2018-21 BC, 1773 East 22nd Street, Brooklyn. Hello again, Lyra Altman from the Office of Lyra Altman. I apologize I have this on my phone. Just a note that you remain Just under oath. I, of course. <laughs> you still remain under oath. Oh, so yeah, show it to counsel. And can you yeah. submit this? Of well? course I can. This right here is lot 78 on, it shows Elmore, because this is the 1929 Belcher Hive. But Elmore is 22nd, which you'll see, because 25, 24, 23, 22 okay. is Elmore. Bedford's the only one that still remains his name. So lot 78. Lot 78. Right here, 1770. Great. Can you submit that electronically? Please. And just to be Can you clear. do it now, so I can yeah. make sure we get it before we vote? Right. So that's another What I can do is I can forward this email right over to submit. Thank okay, you. and I just want to be clear that what we were looking at was a Sanborn map from the yeah. 1929 Belcher Hyde map. Yeah, right, right. And if you could CC me so I can just confirm Of course. course. Thank you very much for obtaining that as quickly as you did. Of course. One of the architects that I work with happens to have these in his office was happy to help. God bless him. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not kidding. Oh. I'm just getting it out. I'm just going to put in the calendar number, which is 2018-21 BZ. Thank you. You should have it coming in momentarily. Okay, so based on that, we're good. So we can, we didn't close this, right? No, so no. make a motion that. to close. Chair yeah. Promoter. Aye. Vice Chair Chanda. Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown. Aye. Commissioner Shetta. Aye. Commissioner Shabetta. Aye. And a motion, sorry, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to, the, sorry, tell me again the number. 2018-21 BC. I'm just checking my with my um, Yeah, so it's it's uh, two kinds of conditions. The removal of existing walls and or joists in excess of that shown on the approved plans to avoid the special permit and also the plan submitted to DOB must go through plan examination review and shall not be self certified. Okay. And on that note, a motion to grant. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Thank you very much. The application's been granted. Thank you. Okay, now, the hearing will be, we will resume at 1 o'clock. Wow. It's 11.30. We can't start the afternoon calendar until 1 o'clock. Can't. Wow. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. That used to happen all the time. <laughs> well, I think we're going to have longer than a half hour lunch. Okay. Oh. Okay, lady, gen ladies and gentlemen, we're back on the record. It's the Board of Standards and Appeals public hearing for April 30th. Where's my line? New cases on the zoning calendar. Item number one, 2018-140BZ, 100-03 North Conduit Avenue, Queens. You want to raise your right hand? Oh, that's size. Your group? No. We never read our You've got a team. So we should do that. Team, 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 team. Who else is speaking? That's it? Just you two? 
Okay. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and respond honestly to board member questions? Yes. Okay. Let's sign it. Yes. Hello. Hi, Eric Blackmick. Hi. So, unfortunately, because of this whole issue about BSA jurisdiction, we didn't read our comments into any of the review sessions, so I guess we'll just go through our comments now. Yeah, and uh, actually you did have a very, uh, we thought it was a complete review session uh, the time before this hearing. Uh, this was scheduled about a month and a half ago. Uh, it came off the calendar. It was uh, heard at review session. Uh, it was anticipated on that Monday that it was going to be heard, and you made some comments. Right, then, uh, but we didn't read our comments, I don't believe. At that That's review session, at that review session you read. did, but... What? At that review session you did. We did? Mm -hmm. I yeah. just have that, the, sorry, I just have that the chair read a few items and then it postponed it. Yes, yeah. I think I just read, yeah, I think yeah. I just got up to a point and then we stopped oh, talking. okay because we realized we didn't have the city council determination. Okay. So I'll just go through my comments and everybody else go through theirs and may, I don't know whether anybody can respond just like that, but um, we can try, okay. So um, we did have proof of service of initial application to officials and notice of hearing to officials and neighbors. Community board recommends conditional approval, which includes discussion of a side issue related to a rezoning and the community board's requirement for a restrictive covenant. That's not related to our action. So I'm just gonna read the community board's comments, which were the canopy is to be set back an additional five feet from the property line fronting on North Conduit. The detached convenience building is to be set back seven feet from the rear of the canopy. The curb cuts were accepted at 30 feet wide. Again, these are community board comments. All on-site signage for vehicle entry and exit from the site were accepted as per the layout presented. All site lighting was accepted and to be directed to the site and away from the adjoining residences. And then that's the end of the community board's comments. We did receive one letter of objection from a neighbor who was concerned about noise and odor in a residential area near a school. The fire department sent a letter of no objection. And traffic. Sorry? And traffic. The, the and traffic, traffic what? <coughs> the, the objection. The, the fire department sent a letter of no, no objection. No, the, the objection that you received was also, he's complaining about traffic. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. The, the, the letter of objection from the neighbor, you mean? Right. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Um, okay, that was where I started talking about jurisdiction. Um, city planning is aware of the proposed use of the site and discussed it in its CPC report. The size of the site and location on, the, on an interior highway issue. The site is not on an inter arterial highway. Um, or a major street, which is one of the findings, which even though major street is not a defined term. Um, I don't actually know what a major street is. You know, maybe Fordham Road is a major street or something and not an arterial. I'm, I'm, it's just not a defined term in, our, in the zoning resolution. The statement of facts doesn't discuss the status of the underground storage tanks. Um, or the site contamination remediation. An EAS related to the rezoning was provided by the applicant and indicates an E designation for the site for noise and air quality, but oddly not for hazardous materials. A phase two and wrap and chasp were also done. So I need our seeker officer to ensure that we have coordinated with city planning and that they are the lead agency on this, which I assume they are because there was a rezoning. So we just need to make sure that it's a coordinated review. Um, the landscaping plan should dimension planting beds that must be a minimum of four feet deep, deep as in front to back as opposed to up to down vertical. Um, they should show planting bed details with curbs because at the moment they don't have curbs. and. Um, there should be denser planting on the beds along the street lines as opposed to <coughs> tiny annuals. They're showing little, for lack of a better word, like petunias. It should actually be something that so has some density. So greenery to it. and thicker. Yeah. The traffic study and circulation diagram should go to DOT for review. Um, and I don't know whether the study was provided to city planning during its review for the rezoning. 
Um, and those are my comments. Anybody else have comments? Um, I had one question, and that is regarding the lumen spread. Um, the yes. lumen spread uh, diagram seems to indicate it's still not zero, right, abutting the residential property, so um, that should be corrected. Um, and I had similar comment on the landscaping. Mm -hmm. Anybody and the signage, um, is it the signage analysis for each street frontages? Yes. Um, hmm. I'm confused because you have one signage yeah. analysis form. And that's only for cohency. And then if you look at your plans, you have two frontages and you break it out into two frontages and it's like 68 and a half square feet for each frontage, but your signage analysis form says 69 feet. And, and, and imagine they, they probably rounded it up. But no, but you should have doubled it. You should have. If you have 68 and a half on each frontage, shouldn't it be a total of 100 and, I don't know, 37? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like and I think they were trying to depict frontage, though, per frontage. I don't think they were trying. I'll have them coordinated. Right. That's, well, then if you just, then you I think it was just frontage. I think that's sheets, what they, right? that was their mistake. Right. They were we only have one as I frontage sheet, but only one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they broke it down on the plan. I see what you're talking. They broke it down on the plans. Anybody else on this? No. No? Okay. So those were the comments to the extent you can respond We could answer now. a lot of them right now. I just have a okay. quick question. One team made. We have good news, I hope, for everything that, uh, <laughs> that you're asking about. Uh, everything with the plantings, the beds, the curb, all that jazz, without a problem, come back to you in record time, uh, within a day or two, if not even today, and we can get you all of that information and, and beef it up. Uh, with respect to the signage, of course, we can take care of that. So I think that's all within a matter of hours. We can do that with you. The DOT review that Madam Chair spoke to, that's already been taken care of and attended to. It's already been sent to them as a part of this, the environmental assessment statement that goes along with the city environmental quality review for the city planning rezoning. It was, uh, Andrew was here from Stonefield Engineering, they're traffic consultants, he could attest to this, so he can give you some more comfort and we could provide you with any paperwork you may want to further support what he gave to them. Mm -hmm. He gave them all the traffic data that was all included and reviewed and specifically asked for, I believe. Uh, to very specific points, and it was signed off on by DOT. So there's some kind of sign off from DOT, some kind of written sign off. Yeah, so we'll provide, get that. So provide what you gave them and the written sign off. We can okay. give you both of those, uh, and that's everything we could do. That was, I think, everything you asked for is <coughs> signage, uh, the lumen. We could adjust the lighting so that it, if you want to see it at zero at the edge of the property line, uh, we could adjust that. Uh, uh, specifically along the residential. The mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the Along issue. the rear of the property. Yeah, that's, right. that's the real issue. Yeah, okay. it's yeah. always that. So it that's needs to be to zero do. at the property line for the residential uses. Right, right. even though that, Thank just so you're aware, that it's a manufacturing commercial use behind oh. us. However, it is a residential district. But it's a manufacturing uh, use No, no, so, the, oh. so it's not as much concern when you've got a commercial use that you Yeah, we're not up against okay. any residential. My mistake. I, Oh, um, okay. I thought that was a residential use. It, no, it's a residential district, but it's not a residential use. Okay. And uh, but we're happy to bring it to zero. It's we do whatever the board asks. We're not. No, but so it's it, it as long concern. as it's not yeah. twenty. Uh, yeah, you know, no, it's minimal. If it's, and it's a small bleed, yeah. then it's not yeah, that it's, important. It's just point A, point three, those kind of yeah, yeah. So I take my okay. question back. So we don't need you to. Do All right, it's, it's a lot of information taken. Okay. Uh, and I'll leave it with this: the application, uh, very, very well liked. Uh, by everybody. We spent a lot of time, except for obviously the one person, not by everybody, by everybody that I know of, except for the one person that submitted the objection letter. Uh, the community board supported it unanimously. We worked with them for over two years. The design you see is a result of them. Everything you asked about today mm -hmm. were questions that they raised and we responded to. So the building was set back the this way building they was described? set back because okay. of them. Uh, it, just if you're for your own edification, one thing that uh, the councilman, Eric Ulrich, is one of the biggest fans of this application. Mm -hmm. The reason everybody is so happy about this application is there's a subway stop right next to this property that's off the A train, that's right underneath the elevated embankment. Mm -hmm. That roadway there, people line up in the streets to pick up their friends and family from the, th from the, from the train. Everybody who 
that the community board was thrilled that we were developing the site with a commercial use actually that had a retail outlet in it. So that way people can come and sit in the parking lot because you notice it's a gigantic parking lot and they can meet their guests there and they can pick people up there and it's really the community board is excited to try to encourage people to do that uh, through that. So that's, we worked very closely with them on it. Uh, so the lighting, the design, everything you see is all uh, with the community board's input and it's reflected in their support. You see there's a resolution which I rarely get which is 33 in favor. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's uh, the borough president echoed them and uh, Councilman Eric Ulrich has been the one really the, since the beginning standing up uh, as a cheerleading squad for it so to speak. And city plan, of course, because city planning was very planning. behind it. Yeah, they worked with us a lot. We hit a right. few obstacles along the way. Uh, chairwoman herself uh, had her eyes on it. Uh, she asked us to change the, the zoning district halfway through because she wasn't happy with the way it was looking, but she was anxious to see the result we wanted. Uh, that was Chairwoman Marissa Lago. Uh, mm -hmm. So we've worked with uh, Chairwoman Marissa Lago. We worked with John Young at City Planning. Uh, we worked with uh, Community Board 10. Uh, we worked uh, with one of the Katz's office. Uh, mm -hmm. It was really a very, uh, very co collaborative effort by everybody. I think it's Melinda Katz. Yes. Melissa. Okay. What, did I, what did I call her? I think Melissa, but all right, never mind. Uh, that might, yes, um, it, it is Melinda Katz, Borough, okay. Pre Borough President Katz. Right. And, uh, I didn't mean to call her Melissa. Okay. Okay, good. So. Um, all right, so then you know what to do. Are there any speakers on this? Oh, okay. So how much time do you need? If we could, as short a time period, we could submit within a day or two. Okay. So whatever pleases the board's calendar is fine by us. So we just need to make sure we have the coordinated seeker review. So I'm not sure what that does from our end. Yeah, I think we had spoken with the board at the beginning. This whole was set up uh, with your former executive director. Uh, and it, it was agreed, I think, that they, the city planning was for purposes of seeker is going to become lead agency. Different no, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm sure they're lead agency, but we have to do a coordinated review. <laughs> However, that, that needs to be like I'm officially sure was decided we just don't know because yes. the project manager isn't here right now but right right thank you up. okay yeah. yeah thank you very much okay um so like mm -hmm. in, I, don't, I don't know it's may 15th is probably too soon for submission so let let's say no we could submit easily no but it's not it might be too soon for us to confirm. to confirm on the on city, with no, I don't think it will planning. be. The councilman is very involved. He'll speak to city planning on your behalf, I'm sure. He'll speak uh, directly with John Young, and uh, he will get you whatever you need in the time frame that you need it. Uh, he's been, he's a very vocal councilman. But it means then you have to submit within, by May 22nd? No, well, that was a different oh, hearing. different hearing. I was Sorry. just wondering if the board wanted to hear it the same day as, just the same day as, oh. uh, could or it could be a week later let's do a week okay. later that's fine okay so the submission would be may 22nd um for june 11th continued here thank you and i'm not gonna ask because i know it's your habit that if you're satisfied maybe we could have it so are you asking <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah i'm sort of asking that kind of a kind of a gentle no. sort of i don't want to be pushy kind of yeah. with my clients right. behind me staring me in the <laughs> yeah. back you can explain to them what's i'll what explain happens. to them how it goes right. um thank you okay so can somebody just send a message to daryl that he needs to hand, work yeah. on the coordinator yeah. review yeah we'll okay. we'll, yeah. we'll deal with that okay yeah. good all right thank, so thank you for your time okay Item number two, 2018 149BZ. This application is being postponed for failure to do notification. Um, okay, so we need to choose a, the other one was put on for. Okay, so we can put it on with the other postponed, which was uh, for June 25th. Let me see. How many oh, are sorry, there? sorry. Wait a second. It's 20. It's a, it's kind of a large. It's a, it's a it's a 73621. Oh, it's a 621. Uh, Next one is July 16th. Yeah. That green thing? Uh, compliance hearing. Ah, okay, that one's fine. Okay, so the uh, postponed to July 16th hearing, and there will be a new uh, notice. Mm -hmm. So any submit, we have a new submission on this, right? Submission date is June 22nd, to the extent anything's due. I don't think so. Yeah, we have a submission. Okay. Okay, item number three, 2018-164-BZ, 7271 Casino Boulevard. 
wings. Just let me get the, oops. I have this, you have the sign-in sheets, okay. Just do this, raise your hand. Okay, raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the board and to respond honestly to board member questions? Yes. Okay, so you sign here. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Commissioners, Neil Weisbart on behalf of McDonald's, who seeks the legalization of a drive through at 7271 Casino Boulevard. We attended a review session yesterday, and along with Jared Jones, I'd like to go through each comment and address any of the board's questions. I just also want to let the board know that this store is going through a renovation with extensive site work, including the closing of the curb cut on Aguilar Avenue, repaving the entire parking lot and drive through installing a new six-foot-high white PVC fence along Aguilera Avenue and the northern and southern property lines. There'll be landscaping throughout, including along Aguilar Avenue, which is shown on Plan B as A004, and also some new LED lights will be installed. So the first comment from the board yesterday was regarding the curb cut on Aguilar Avenue. So as part of this site work, that will be closed in accordance with DOT regulations. Okay, so in other words, you pull a permit and yes. whatever it is they require, it, we learned sometimes they require a steel uh, plate and sometimes they don't want a steel plate. It turns I think out. for commercial they do or... Yeah, do. so, yeah. So we will... Um, and since it's, yeah, okay. So that area outside, I know the board was concerned about, that fence will be removed and also replaced with a six-foot-high white PVC fence. Uh, the board also had questions about the heavy dash lines on drawing BSA 005. Yes. And there's a couple dash lines that Jared can explain one of them, but the dash lines on the front of the building along Casina and 73rd Avenue will be an awning. And right. an awning is permitted under the building code to project onto the public right of way for eight feet, mm -hmm. provided it's higher than eight feet, and these will be 10 foot above curb level. Oh. And that section, if you, the board wants to know the citation, 3202.2.3 of the building code. I eight feet. I know. Is I was considered an awning. No, but an awning, when they say eight feet, they're talking about the thing you drive your car up to in front of a building and covers you. So when you get out of the car, you're covered and you walk. It's normally associated with a residence mm -hmm. or a hospital, something like that right this is decorative this isn't really doing anything well jared who's done many mcdonald's maybe can talk to yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, the intent. State your uh jared jones bowler mm -hmm. engineering so the intention for the awning is is really to cover people at the front entrances so you have the door on right. on uh, 73rd and on a uh, casino boulevard so it wraps around the building as to give a, a nice treatment but it is still considered an awning by the building code and zoning code definitions what what is the definition of an awning? It's anything that um, covers for weather or sunlight to screen. That's a little bit verbatim, not verbatim, but you know. But the re this isn't doing that. This is extending out of the building as a decorative element, as, as decorative. It's not big enough to mm. be something you walk under for um, it, Well, it's, it's, it projects three feet from the building, so it's it's not taking it to the full advantage of the eight feet, but it's. I mean, it's pretty common. I've I've done this, seen this several yeah. times. No, I've never I'm gotten pushed back from the building because department. Because it's sort of a misuse of what the awning is. Just saying, it, because an awning is something where you want to walk in, and there's the awning yeah, that the, protects you from the rain. This awning is located in front of closed windows, closed yes. window condition, right? So it doesn't protect me as I walk in. Well, um, I don't want to contradict the chair, but in, I think pretty much most of the commercial establishments that I've seen, at least in this area, and I would say in the borough of Queens, I can't speak for the other boroughs, but I, that's I, most of my commercial shopping is in Queens. I do see the awnings in front of windows that are not necessarily providing access into the facility but these are just windows and that the awning is wrapping around the entire frontage, including where the entrance to the facility is. Right, but that's so. not this. So it would be one thing if you're no, on the sidewalk. It, and 
Right. But that, that's what isn't this? This is also wrapping around yes. windows, which Correct. is not providing access to the facility. It, there is one door that's providing access around the corner, so this awning is kind of wrapping around Correct. the window and takes it all the way to the door, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of the treatment that I have seen of most of the store um, storefronts in my borough. Okay. I mean, I don't so really I'm care just, because it's only a little bit, but yeah. and it's I not think if we really doing as, as or advertised. I, I think if we have questions with regards to the zoning, uh, we can put a condition or a note saying subject to DOB approval. No, 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 it's not about that. I, I'm, I'm asking about it because it's obviously not an awning. I mean, really. It's not. It actually, one of the awnings drops off before you open the door. So there you are, protected for the rain, as you hug the side of the building, and just as you get to the front door, you get rained on. It's a it's a decorative element, just to be clear, right? Okay, but there's another one that's at the back of the building. I have no idea what that is. Oh, so you're, you're talking about in the right of way on a, literally on Aguilar Street? All these dash lines. Yeah, yeah. So the dash lines in the street is the saw cut line or the limit of disturbance. We have to obviously rip up that curb cut to replace it. There's a new sewer connection going in. That's why it projects into the road. That's not owning. That's just a saw cut line or Can a limit of disturbance. Can you indicate that in the plan? Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely. Absolutely. A saw cut line to do what? Uh, so there's a grass strip in the right of way that we have to replace with new concrete sidewalk. The curb cut. The existing curb cut in Aguilar falls within that area, and then the projection into the right of way is for our new sewer connection. I don't, we don't need that on our drawings. Yeah, can I, can, I can absolutely get rid of it. Yeah, and it, and just for future use, you can't use the same uh, line system to designate completely unrelated things, right? One is underground and one's above ground. You're using exactly the same line weight and line designation. Just saying. Understood. Understood. <laughs> uh, even though you're going to remove the line, I see the similar line weight along 73rd Avenue. Yeah, no, those, those will all come That's out. That's also the yep, similar issue. Same thing. Okay. Yeah, oh, oh, I see. So also on Casena Boulevard, you have one. Um, yeah, no, they'll, they'll, I'll remove all the socket lines you got if you don't okay. care to see That's fine. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, uh, now regarding the residences across from Aguilar. Mm -hmm. Drawing BSA 002 states that, and shows that these residents are located more than 200 feet from the menu board. And you prepared a sound. note too that the menu board has a sound limiter so in the evening hours the sound is lowered automatically what, what's evening when do you know when the hours start and so as you can see from this study the nearest as I said were located further than 200 or approximately 200 feet from the menu board across the street from Aguilar Avenue and at that distance there is a decibel level of, did you say 18 dBA, which is between sound of breathing at one feet and whisper in a quiet library. Or actually lower than a sound of breathing at one foot at such a distance. Hmm, wait a minute. So, um, oh, I see. So the big X's or crosses indicate 18 decibels. It's, okay. Eighteen. That's only at a distance of 128 feet, so right. it's still another 70 feet or so before we're getting to the building. So, I, I just and, and what's this based on? This information. This based is on? based on the data that's generated from the actual manufacturer of the menu board. So 18 is that? That's how long? 18. It'll be at 18 disciples. That whole distance. But For, eight, 18 is yeah. Very so low. 18 is very low. No, I get. It. I'm just wondering. It seems strange that it's that large. Uh, well, with sound, that much distance, it's 18. Doesn't well, sound radiates out in, obviously in a circle, so it's just the natural progression of it stepping down as you get further. Well, he's saying that this would it's say not, 18. No, it's, it's not a consistent, okay. obviously, it's not a consistent right. 18 from the green to the blue, but 18 is what we can expect as an average in that area. Okay. 
So did you give us a copy of the materials upon which you based this statement? We have not provided anything formally to the board. We no, can no, no, that. but so that's the thing. If you're basing it on materials from Absolutely. the manufacturer, then yep, provide we'll provide us that. Definitely. Okay. Yep. Um, so you want the backup data for the menu board? Yeah, for sure. Okay. okay. Otherwise. I mean, even we will provide that, but just so the board's clear, it is 200 feet away from the menu board. Understood, okay. but you know. We'll provide that. People live 200 feet away from things, and it's incredible how sound travels when it's unimpeded, right? So um, how clearly in some situations you can hear something even oh, though you're really so you, far away. There will be the six-foot high fence now as well. We'll okay. Right. right. PVC fence. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be planting that area also yes right? with three shade trees it's shown on bsa 002 that you have shows the landscaping that is proposed to be installed along aguilar but that's just shade trees it's not dense planting no, I don't see it. No, I don't. well we didn't feel as though there was a need for dense planting in this area given right. the distance from the residents and then they're across the street from aguilar well what about the aesthetics of it well, the, the three shade trees will actually block the building from the residences across the street. How high is the fencing? Six feet high. And it's solid PVC? What is the current height of the fence? Sorry, if you're going to speak, you have to come Six down. feet high. So this is, uh, I'm not sure if six feet high will be enough the reason for that is as i'd mentioned yesterday the parking lot is at a higher elevation and mm -hmm. the ground slopes down mm -hmm. towards aguilar. towards aguilar and the sidewalk so my concern is is the six foot high fence enough to block the uh, light from the vehicles um it, it is high when i'm when i walked by the sidewalk it was it was fine for me but then when I drove into the parking lot, I realized that the light from my car can project over the, the six foot high fence. Yeah, so, so in, in general, the, the grades basically at the building are roughly a foot and a half to two feet higher than Aguilar. Mm -hmm. So with a car height, and obviously the, the, wind, the lights range from anywhere from two to four feet, the six foot high should be enough to pre prevent any light from trespassing past it. Um, obviously, if you get a big truck that comes through there, six foot may not cover it, but in general cars and most vehicles, it should be sufficient. Is there something we can provide yeah. the board to evidence this? No, but so I'm, the reason for the plant, the desiring the planting is it's just a, it's a way of addressing the noise from the cars, the the pollution from the cars you're right across the street from a lot of people's houses right and this after all is a McDonald's they could certainly afford to do some landscaping so if you did some shrubs that grew densely along the, the fence then you would be handling both the light pollution the noise pollution the pollution pollution why not okay we could take a look at that because, yeah. I'm trying to get there now. Here we go. Because, um, and then the other part of it, it would force, hopefully, um, the operator to take better care of that sidewalk frontage, which now is just neglected. It's treated as if it's not even their property. So, Understood. Okay. <coughs> okay, we'll take mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll explore that and get back to the board. Uh, there was also a comment about the grade change, but we just spoke about that. And then also that the sign analysis did, was not provided for all street frontages, so we've amended that, and all signs, both illuminated and non-illuminated, will comply with the street frontage requirements, and we'll submit that formally. And then finally, FDNY has issued a letter of no objection. I don't know if the board had received that, but they were able to find the fire suppression sign off and inspection. It was in a diff different. This has multiple different addresses. addresses. 
but it's all lot 45. So we now will have FDNY speak to this. Um, uh, also, um, the sidewalk on Aguilar is broken. Yeah, we'll have to look into that. To re we'll repair that as part of the mm -hmm. site renovation. Okay. And the fence between McDonald's and Chase, who does it belong to? Who is responsible for that fence? Uh, it, if I remember correctly, it's on the McDonald's property, and we're replacing it as just okay. part of this anyway. So we're putting new fences Great. on the south side and the north side up until you run into our adjacent building. Okay. Okay. All right. Are there any speakers that the fire department want to add? So it's a letter of no objection now on this? Good afternoon, John Daly. Yes, I have issued a letter of no objection after one of my inspectors from the Ranger uh, unit informed me that the lot 45 has two addresses. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I entered the applicant's address that he had provided to the board, I didn't, it did not show anything, but now our program has been updated, so we have both addresses. So in the future, we oh. won't have this confusion. Yes, I okay. apologize for that. Great. No, that's no. No okay, thank you very much. Are there any other speakers on this? Nope. All right. So yep. then, how much time? As quickly as the board can schedule the next hearing, we can provide all this information right away. All right. We do have a question on the hours of operation. Oh, yeah. What it's a 20, the drive through will be operated 24 hours a day. And are we okay with that? That's a lot. <coughs> when you say it gets lower, what, what, how, what does that mean? Can you speak <coughs> to the menu board, how it functions? Maybe we can provide the specs in writing? That'd be better, yeah. yeah. I can give you the specs in writing. I don't remember the specific <coughs> details off the top of my head, but it's... And there could be two sound charts, one for the evening lower. And yep, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. So th that's the part that I have problems, so that you can't regulate that, right? And, and my concern is it's 3 in the morning. You can hear a dog bark, right, at 3 in the morning. So now somebody orders a mac and cheese at 3 in the morning or wherever it is they're called. And um, so why do we think that that's not going to be heard since there's almost no ambient noise at all so, at 3 in the morning? So the system itself is automatic. It actually takes measurements of the ambient noise and adjusts the sound accordingly. So generally when there's no ambient noise, it even drops lower than some of what the data has shown. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I, I, because of just how the system works, I don't think that's necessarily a concern, especially with the distance. Um, Does the operator on the other side of the, the board the person speaking into the to the microphone, does they do they have the opportunity to raise the volume of the microphone? Uh, manually inside, I believe so, but it's limited to even a certain amount automatically. Okay. So you can't pump it up to 100. It won't allow you to do that internally. So when you said it was being uh, the sound was being uh, censored by by time, if it's five or six, it goes down. Yeah. And Is outside, it, ambient noise. it's also being censored by outside ambient Correct. noise. Correct. So, so obviously during the day, noon, you have trucks going by, it's obviously a little louder than it would be at 8 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, vice versa. 4 o'clock in the morning. 4 o'clock in the morning. That's the one I'm thinking about. Yes. Then I know how big the soda is. I know, I know how many fries. We're talking about building 200 feet away. It's not as though it's a residence right across the street. As the case with some McDonald's and those, no, we, we understand your concern. But So to, to put this in perspective, 200 feet, is the length of the short side of a city block. Mm -hmm. We can hear things that happen on the corner of the city block if we're on the other side of the city block, right? Yeah, so well, it's true. There's noise in the city, right? No, no, no. I'm not talking about noise in the city. I'm talking about the specific thing. So if there is a dispute on the street, two people yelling at each other on the street, we can hear that. So I and so I don't know at what um, decibel level two people fighting with each other on the street starts off at, but by the corner, I could still hear that they're fighting, right? So, so that, that's the question. So you need to give us real data, because um, I'm, I'm actually concerned about the 24 hours. So let's, let's see so what just they're going yeah, to yeah. right. Let's see what they're going to submit and look at yeah. it and see right. if it's... But just, for, just as a normal, this is just standard decibel levels. Um, a normal conversation at three feet is 60 decibels. Mm -hmm. So, again, we're talking about a third of that with the automatic limiter functioning. So, 
I understand your concern about people fighting. Yeah, people fighting, they're probably going to be louder than that. But this system is not designed to be anywhere near those kind of levels. So its initial output is only 30 decibels? Mm hmm From in both directions? Correct. And that okay. gets over the sound of an engine and... and Say that again. My, my, it seems like it's a very uh, interesting machine that can be heard over the sound of a car and an engine at such a low... Uh, right. I, you got to remember also the proximity of the person to the, I mean, it's designed so the person's a foot Very or two closely. away. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes all of those components right. into, into well, account. Well, let's provide specs. I, think okay. that's I don't, it, I don't believe the initial is 30, is 30 decibel. I believe that 30 decibel is where this 32 feet radius is. At the, exactly at the board, probably it's, it's a bit higher. Probably it's, it's 60 be higher. or maybe 75. And okay. then it dissipates. And then it hits at the border between the green and the red. It reaches I'll, 30, I'll, and I'll then it that. dissipates yeah. again. Yeah. I I'll, agree. I'll provide yes. you, I'll provide the board with the maximum. It, it doesn't get as high as 60, but I'll provide you all the facts and figures from it that give because you all the decibel Because if the librarian is whispering to you, I'm sorry, did you say a mac and cheese? It's, I heard that. Right? <laughs> I'll bet that with a mic, right? <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, understood. I'll, right. I will provide. We'll provide more, more information on the menu boards. Okay. Clean okay. If, so if you're gonna provide something by the manufacturer, that's we we can look at it. If you're gonna provide a study like no, this, no, I'm gonna give you guys all manufacturing. Please give us the basis. Absolutely. Behind yeah, it. Yeah. 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 So and so and that's like all the more reason why we need vegetation along the Aguilar, and it needs to be dense at both heights for the the tree and the shrubs and the and all of that, so that at four in the morning. I don't want anybody on the fourth floor of this apartment building to be hearing what it is and we, someone in the neighborhood ordered. Yeah, we ahead. usually require some sort of sound mitigation. Uh, I think that would go a long way in this application, especially yeah. because it's going to be 24 hours. Okay. Is the current operation 24 hours? Yes. Okay. All I right. I believe it's been 24 hours since about 1980. And, and the menu board is the same location as proposed? Uh, very similar. It moved a little closer, but we're talking within five or ten feet just because of the two menu boards. And we're adding a second menu board. Yeah. Is it more or less the same? It's, too much. Uh, it's more or less the same. Output? Uh, it's going to be better output than what's there currently. It's newer technology. Those menu boards are at least ten years old. Okay. okay. All right. So what do we have? Uh, how much time do we need to submit? The quickest you could put us on. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Um, so submission would be May 15th. Okay. What's the year? Is that okay? Uh, no, wait a second. Hmm. We have to read it. I haven't even put any stuff on there. Yeah, it's really different. Okay. Um, but this one is... This 24. Okay, and that one is the green one. No, uh, it's a post room. Oh, ooh. Um, next one. 26? Yeah. Oh, this one's okay. Uh, so, uh, the next hearing will be June 25th with a submission date June 5th. And if you could submit something about this particular menu board, uh, I, I didn't see anything about all these different features it has. We will give the full specs. Yeah, of course. The specs need to be about the actual menu board. That's menu board. And, and the mics that are used by the but there ordering are, counter excuse, or whatever. Excuse me, Madam Chief. So, Neil, you said yes. there are two. You're going to add, you have two, just not one. Yes. Two menu boards. Right, right. So, we want specs on both. On both. Same, same menu same board. Thing. Same thing. Same menu board. And then we could take those specs. Readings, okay. Give a drawing. So, there's so no way to bump the hearing up. Sooner. So I have a question for you about these menu boards. So what, how does this work with two? Is this possible that two people are using a menu board simultaneously? Uh, potentially, yes. So then don't we have output twice? Uh, Isn't that therefore 30 plus 30 or 60 plus 60 no. or something like that? No, because sound doesn't double like that. Uh, it's, there is going to be some increased output, but it's not going to be double. You know, could. A, well, a doubling in sound is three decibels. They, they could, if if you like, not make the orientation in a specific manner. They could. Waves could add up. 
can we see so them closing I, one menu board in the evening hours? I don't think there would be a need. Potentially. That would, that's my we board. can't. I, 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 How do we regulate that? I think you're going to have to take both menu boards being operated at the same time uh, into your uh, yes. into into Let's your sound that. output sheet. Because otherwise, we're going to ask for mitigation. We can't regulate whether you use one or two. So I, I'll definitely try to put the information together for you. But it, it, at nighttime, typically, it's not you're not going to have both lanes open. It's more during the, the, the premium rushes. So you got the morning rush and the evening rush. But I've got to give me additional information. So you have to assume worst case scenario. They're both used. It's after a big event that happens in the neighborhood. Everyone wants their Big Mac, and it's 2 in the morning. Yeah. You just have to do that, right? <laughs> Otherwise, <clears throat> there's no way for us to regulate whether they use one or it's not crowded or whatever. And that determines the level of mitigation relative to the residents, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the other part of it is it's not just the menu board. It's the output from the person who is at the order window, right? So you can't just give us the information about the boards. It has to be the person who sits there with the mics and says. Well, that's what's coming, that's out what's of coming out of the board, yeah. What, well, what about the, the order window? Isn't there a person who also right, speaks once you up. pick up the... That's no? for the... That's yeah, that's, no way, the that's even farther away. away from the residence. That's right next to casino. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the only the only sound generation is the two menu boards. Once you drive around the drive through and circle around the building, those the person at those two windows is facing our adjacent property. It's not even directed towards. And they're not speaking through a mic. They're talking to the person. Thank you and handing yeah. you food. Not with a, There's no amplification. There's no amplification even not at the, the order. Not when they're off the food. Mm -hmm. Not where they're giving you your food. No. They have their mic that's tied to the menu board. But they don't have a microphone saying thank you. You sure? It goes on the outside. No, there's no speakers yeah. on the pickup windows. Huh. I don't know. Seems like there would be speakers. All right. You, you've got to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Just try, no, to, try not to order the mac and cheese. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> well, I something. think there is a way to close off one of the lanes yeah. by putting, like, chain. No, it definitely can be done to close one lane, but I don't know if the board is good. You're going to we see can't regulate it. But I, I agree with the yeah. chair. I mean, we can't regulate it. Okay. All right. So we've picked that. All right. All right. So we'll yeah. submit. You said June 5th. And June 5th for June 25th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 4, 2018, 200 BZ, 100 West 72nd Street. <coughs> Both of you are going to speak, make presentations. Okay. You want to raise your right hands first? Yeah, that's it. Hi. If you're going to speak, you have to sit up. Raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board to respond on city board member question? Yes. Sir. Okay, so it's on here. <laughs> yes. <coughs> Good afternoon, Victor Hahn for the uh, uh, Renzo Gracie Upper West Side. Um, I was able to review the re uh, executive review session and I believe you had three comments or three questions. Mm -hmm. If I could clarify, uh, starting with the ADA entrance, if I could direct oh, your if, attention. Before you do that, yeah. is this open? Yes, that was going to be one of the okay, items. I did so revise the statement of facts. Unfortunately, as of April 1st, they did do a soft opening to train their instructors as well as to demonstrate the uh, classes that they're offering for the potential enrollees. I do have a revised statement of facts, which I was not able to email out, but I do have additional copies. When you say a soft opening, that means there isn't current enrollment to, for regular classes now, it's just to train the instructors? Right, train instructors to demonstrate what type of classes. It's not fully functional at this point. There's still a few testings that they have to do for the premises as well in terms of construction. There's uh, some fire alarm issues in terms of final inspections. Are all the mats set up? The mats are set up at this point. So that's how they're able to do their instructions. Uh, there are a few mechanical systems that they're going through as well. But, but there are classes taking place. Uh, yes, I believe yeah. there are very limited yes, classes that they are. That's how soft in. openings work. You bring your friends in, right. everyone tries it out. Yeah, that's It is the advertisement. I don't know if you need to see the statement of facts. I will also email it out. No, you know, first thing. we're going to need fire department to now inspect the site um, because it's already open. No? 
No, okay, so. Right, it, just to speak to the fire department issue, I know they gave a lot of no objections, but the fire alarm system is functioning, is fully functional. The sprinkler system also is fully functional. The only uh, items- In the sub-cellar, the sprinkler the sub -cell cell yes. system? Yes. Okay. The sprinklers were installed uh, many years ago, as well as the fire alarm system. Okay. It did go through their initial inspections. Uh, I believe they didn't have any letter of defects at the time. However, as the tenants were coming in, modifying, they had to relocate a couple of speaker strobes, so forth and so on. So they, it, it, it's constantly going or undergoing some inspections. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also going some un inspections as well for the current sub tenant because we had to modify some mod uh, motorized dampers. Mm -hmm. okay. So, But the sprinkler system is fully functional as well. Okay, so fire department is nodding, they're okay with this, even though we didn't know it was a legalization, okay. Um, then if I could speak to, mm -hmm. I believe the last remaining item then was the ADA or mm -hmm. uh, handicap accessibility or ADA accessibility to the space. If I could direct your attention to drawing EC004, okay. that is the first floor plan, existing conditions. There are two- um, hold, hold on a second, because we need to get to it. Sure. So I don't have to find it. Um, okay, hold on a second. Do you have an extra hard copy of the plan with you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Would you like me to put it up, or? Oh, you could pass it up You here. could pass it, it's even better. Or... Thank you. Sure. Just a, just a second, I'm just gonna get to it myself. That's the current existing conditions plans, as well as the proposed plans. We're not uh, proposing to modify that at all. But you'll see two entrances, one on the right-hand side, which is the West 72nd Street side. Just, just one second. Sure. You said 004? EC004. EC004, yes. Four. Okay. Okay. The right-hand side is West 72nd Street. That's the primary entrance for the residential uh, apartments. Okay. They have their own entry there, their own elevators. Mm -hmm. The only tenants, or the two tenants that will be using the Columbus Avenue side is the proposed PCE space in the subcellar, as well as the existing PCE space ah, on the cellar. Okay. So mm -hmm. that elevator only has three stops, which is the first floor, cellar, and subcellar. Okay. And that'll be the exclusive use of the two tenants mm -hmm. there. Okay. okay. Great. All right. So, are there any speakers on this? No. Okay. So, um, now that we know that it's a legalization, we don't really need the statement of facts to be resubmitted, mm -hmm. right? That's the only oh, change you made? Yes, ma'am. What? For the record. Well, the record is our hearing where he's yeah, announcing it's that it's open and there was a soft opening starting okay. April 1. So I, I, because I just don't want to hold it up to wait for a submission if everyone's okay That's with fine. that. I'm everyone's fine with okay. That. Yeah. All right. So then thank I you. thank you for responding. Um, I would like to make a motion to close then. Chair Promoter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Rotley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetha? Aye. Commissioner Shibata? Aye. And a motion to grant. Chair Promoter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Utley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shibetta? Aye. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank granted. you very much. All right. Wow. Take care. <coughs> this concludes the public hearing for April 30th, 2019. Amazing. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>